Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation. And the topic of this video is called David and the Lord. The two witnesses revealed. Brothers and sisters, yesterday we had an introduction to this topic. And you have taken it to the Lord and I hope that the Lord has revealed something to you about it. And today we will go into different scriptures to see what is truly spoken here and why there is a difference between the Gospel of Luke, Mark and Matthew when it comes to the triumphal entry. It is very interesting, brothers and sisters, to see what the Lord is guiding us to. Brothers and sisters, many in the churches are claiming that Jesus will come as David in the end times. But the scriptures are telling us that this is not the case. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what it is said in Matthew. And we know that Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, is for the trumpet tribulation. You all know that we are here for a long time. You know that we have Luke for the first seven, Mark for the second seven, the seal tribulation at Matthew, for the last seven years, the trumpet tribulation. Now, in Matthew 22, 43 to 45, you read, He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord say to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can be his son? It was a question that, that Jesus was the son. But why should the son of David, but why should he be David or the son of David when David says he is my Lord? He is the son of God. That's the reason why the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. But the father says to the son, sit at my right hand. And now we have a clear understanding that the scripture tells us David is not Jesus. And it also will not be Jesus at the end times. So when we have cleared up this situation that David is not Jesus, and we know as you have seen yesterday from the video of Ezekiel, that there is always a reference to a prince that is serving as a priest in a temple. And we know from the timeline, from the charts where there are the scripture to the years, that this chapters of 45 and 46 are after the cutting off from Jesus. That's the reason why you don't see the high priest inside there. You just see that is David serving now, during the time when Satan is on earth in the temple. Because he is still the governor, he is still the king, that's what we have said. So if we have a David figure as a prince or as a king or whatever there, and we also know that a prince is smaller than the king. Yes, he is a king in the state toward Jerusalem, but he is not the king of kings. That's the reason why David said, I call him Lord. And also a priest towards the high priest is a difference in level. Brothers and sisters understand that there are two people coming. Now let's go to another scripture. The difference between the triumphal entry mentioned in Luke, Mark and Matthew. For example, in Luke chapter 19, it is written, And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go you into this village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat, loose him and bring him to me. So we, we understand clearly that the triumphal entry is with a colt. Right? One animal 
and a gold, a young one. Now let's go to Mark. Mark 11. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphar and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, you shall find a cold tide, whereon never man said, Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do you do this? Say that the Lord has need of him, and straightway he will send him to me. Now, another time in Mark also said, A cold, one animal, one animal where nobody sat on before, one animal, and a young one. And now Matthew. Matthew 21. And when they draw nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bedford unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass or a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. What? Brothers and sisters, why? Why are they two? And best use are two. Two, not one. And an old one and a young one. What is the difference? Brothers and sisters, when we go into Luke and understand that the triumphal entry is for the 40 days, we know that he is coming as a lamp to fulfill his first vision that is not yet completed by he has come in the first time for to save the, the lost house the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It was not completed and it will be completed now with the great harvest, with the wheat harvest, at the sixth seal, with the rapture of the church. So he will come as a lamb, as a young one. So therefore you see a colt, a young donkey, 40 days. And in Mark, he comes at the base of Mount Zion, still as a lamb before the rest is poured out. He comes as a lamb, as a young one, as a donkey to fulfill it. The rapture of the church will be at that time when he comes for, for uh, with Mount Zion and at the sixth seal. And this, brothers and sisters, shows us that this is a reference, as a young one is a reference to the lamb, as the lamb is also a young sheep. So you see how everything is fitting perfectly. Luke for this time now, Mark for the sixth seal, and then we go into Matthew. And now he is riding on a donkey, not on a colt, on a donkey, on an old one. He is coming now with the rest. He is coming now as the, the starting of the Lion of Judah. He is coming now as a matured one. He is coming now to establish the kingdom, the millennium kingdom. For the first three and a half years, he will oversee, together with Zerubbabel, the building of the temple, the high priest Melchizedek, and Zerubbabel as King David, who will be there. That's the reason why you see here a donkey, old one, and a young one. What is a young King David coming for us? Two. Two people. And that, of course, brings us directly to the to the topic of trumpets, of the two witnesses. Let's go with the scripture. Two witnesses, Revelation 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and it was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar with his worshippers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will tremble on the holy city for 42 months. That's the Antichrist time frame seals. And then, now in three it starts, and then after seals, I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days closed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees, and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth, God the Father. If anyone tries to harm them, Fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. And brothers and sisters, also we do not know this one about David and Zerubbabel, that fire will come from their mouths. However, from the spirit of David we know 
that he has slain giants. And from Jesus we know that he's, his mouth is, fire will come from his mouth. Read the story about Armageddon and how it will devour the enemy. So it is all there. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesied. And they have power to turn the waters into blood. Who, who has made all this kind of miracles? And to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them. So that is now three and a half years in, so they are starting beginning of trumpets, three and a half years in, the cutting off from their ministry, not their death yet, the cutting off from their ministries. Then the ones that come out of the abyss, the second beast that incorporates the first beast, the Antichrist, will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square for the great city, which is frequently called Sodom and Egypt. There you have Egypt again, New Egypt. We were talking about all this, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some, some from every people, tribe, language and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse the burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Why is this this gloating time? Because it is the second half of trumpets. And second half of trumpets is the time when Satan is on earth and the world is in the worst state ever. And it will never be so worse again. So the people are all under the, the Satan and, and having the mark of the beast and all this stuff. And that's the reason why they are gloating, they are refusing a burial for the Lord and for King David. But after... In three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven, saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. What does that remind you of? Ascension. This is a pattern to the ascension of Jesus Christ in his first coming. And we know that he will die again, not for the house of Israel, but he will die again for the house of Judah. This time, not as a lamb that will die, but this time as a matured one, this time as a bull, as a high priest, as a high priest Melchizedek, he will die for the house of Judah, so that they can also find the Messiah in the Lord. And when he dies, he will go up to be resurrected again and go up to the heaven again, as it was in the first pattern. Exactly as you read in the scripture. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. That is when. Ask yourself, when will that be? Many people say it will be right after the cutoff time. No, look what is written. At that very hour there was a severe earthquake and the tens of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. There we have the number seven again. And the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The God of heaven, still God the Father. The inheritance is yet not yet given. The second woe has passed, and the third woe is coming soon. What is the second woe in the scripture? That is the sixth trumpet. So the second woe has passed, meaning they die at the six trumpets. So they are cutting off in between the third to the fourth trumpet when the abyss opens, and they will die at the sixth trumpet. So there is almost two or two and a half years of of war 
between the two witnesses and the one who comes out of the abyss, the second beast. How amazing is that? Who can be so powerful to stand against this one? Of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he will only die in the same way he only died in his first coming. Not because the enemy was stronger than he was. Because it was time to show, time to rescue the people. And the same is here. The sign of Jonah for Matthew. What does that mean and what does it say? The sign of Jonah and Matthew said, as Jonah was in the whale for three and a half, uh, three days and three nights, so will also be the Son of Man be in the earth for three days and three nights. That is not a reference to the first coming because he was never three days and three nights in the earth. But now at the end, when he dies, when he will be, when he allows that he will die, when God the Father decides it's time to make a statement on us with the resurrection and with the ascension to the heaven, then he will be for three days and three nights in the earth, as it is written there. For three and a half days, some from every tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. That is a fulfillment of the sign of Jonah, as is written in Matthew for trumpets. And so we are coming closer and closer to the understanding that the two witnesses are Jesus the high priest Melchizedek and Zerubbabel as governor or king of Jerusalem in the pattern of David. Now, the second war has passed. The third war is coming soon. And then what happened? Now, once we, once we have this fulfilled and they have gone to heaven at the end of the six trumpets, then the seventh angel sounded the trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and, and of his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever. This is the entering of the last year of recompense as we have said, said always in our study document. Now, the war for Armageddon is coming. Now he is returning. Now he is the one that will start the Millennium Kingdom. And then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within this temple was seen the Ark of his Covenant, and the flashes of lightning, rumblings, pearls of thunder and earthquake, and severe hailstorms. Now, what does it mean? The Ark of the Covenant was seen. Since now the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, now it's the time to, to change the inheritance to the Son and the new Ark of the Covenant where we have said the Lord in the middle, Jesus in the middle, on the right hand the house of Judah, on the left hand the house of, of uh, Israel, with the grafted in Gentiles, will now be ready for the Millennium Kingdom. Brothers and sisters, it is all in the scripture. We know when they are dying. We know the purpose for it. The purpose of their death is so that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, of the Father and the Son. You see now, brothers and sisters, cutting off from their ministries, halfway in trumpets, abyss opens, two and a half years of war, then at the end of the six trumpets, now the death and the resurrection. Why? Because Jesus is again to set the captives free. The captives free at that time. Therefore, he is three days and three nights in the earth. It is all there and it is all a pattern to what was before. And there is nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes. And the, and the Lord, God declares everything, the end from the beginning, brothers and sisters, but that is not all. Now, let's see, what do we have? Okay, let's start with Zechariah 3. It's Zechariah 3, it's telling us who is the high priest and who is the priest or and the king. Well, remember, Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 6, where it said, 
I have made you kings and priests. What is this reference for? Reference for the 144,000 and the two witnesses. Okay, now, the Kariah 3. Then he showed me Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan, standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuked you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuked you. It is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire. Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and I will put fine garments on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and closed him while the angel and the Lord stood by. The angel of the Lord gave this change to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge over my courts. And I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen, High Priest Joshua, you and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come, I'm going to bring my servant the branch. Okay, there's now the High Priest, but there's another one coming, a branch, the servant the branch. Who is this? Zerubbabel, the David figure. See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes on that one stone, and I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord, and I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. And that day each of you will invite your neighbor to sit under your wine and fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. The starting of the Millennium Kingdom. Brothers and sisters, here we see the making of Joshua as a high priest, and sins will be taken away and must be, and he must be cleaned up and must be ready because this is the vessel or the spirit that the Lord will be using for his coming during trumpets as Joshua. Why Joshua? Because Moses and Elijah are working during seals. And Moses is for the great exodus. At the end, the multitude closed and wide, the great exodus coming out of the world against the Pharaoh, that is all seals. And when Moses' work is finished, what happened in the scripture? He died, right? So Moses went to paradise, he died, and then what happened? Joshua took over, and he put the people into the promised land, going towards Jerusalem. You see, this is the point. This is the beginning of trumpets, is when Joshua becomes a leader, when Joshua, the high priest, will be there. And that is Yeshua, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our bridegroom. He is coming as a high priest. And then the Lord said, the Father said, I'm going to bring my servant the branch force. Who is that? King David, the Rubabel. And is that also in the scripture? Yes, it is. Zechariah 4, the next. Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? He answered, Do you not know what these are? No, my lord. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What, you, what are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstones to shouts of God, blessed, God, blessed. Brothers and sisters, what do you believe that this mighty mountain is referring to? Yes, it is also to the enemy side, always. But remember, 
was a mighty mountain that was standing before someone. And this someone who was a young one and who was almost impossible to defeat that mountain. He was defeating that mountain. And that was David when he, slide, uh, when he was taken down Goliath. That mighty mountain. What are you, mighty Goliath? Before David, you will become level ground. You see, there's a connection between Zerubbabel and David. Then he will bring out the capstone. He shouts of God bless it, God bless it. What is the capstone? The capstone, the high priest, the capstone that will come on the top now, Jesus Christ. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. Now we are talking about the Millennium Temple. The foundation of the temple will be laid under the decree of a new Cyrus during mid of seals, under the decree most likely of the Antichrist, during seals. But it will not be built. But the scripture says, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple mid of seals, his hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. So the temple will be built by the same person. What is the coming prince in Ezekiel 45-46? Who dares despise the day of small things? And that's about, that is about, that is about seals, because it's a smaller, much smaller things than trumpets. Do not despise the day when they start to lay the foundation and small things will start. Since the seven eyes of the law that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone. Jesus is returning. First 40 days, then at the sixth seal to, to gather in the house of Israel with the grafted in Gentiles. And then he will be in Jerusalem as one of the two witnesses. In the hand of the rubber he is serving, yes, he is serving, serving his, his Lord. David is serving his Lord. As a priest, he serves the high priest, of course, and God, both, yes. Then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lamb's lamp? Again, I asked him, what are those olive branches besides the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord. So we see these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth, the Father, in the time of trumpets, as the two witnesses. It is all there, brothers and sisters. It is Joshua and Zerubbabel. It is Joshua and Zerubbabel who are the two witnesses. Zerubbabel will lay the foundation of the temple during seals, under the decree of the Antichrist of that time, most likely Mr. O, the new Cyrus. It wasn't Trump the Cyrus. Trump will become the Darius, the new Darius during trumpets, the new Darius, who will then make sure that the tem tem temple will be built. So the Jews were not totally incorrect when they said he is the one that will allow the building of the temple. It will come to pass. See our video about the two presidencies that will return. It is the time. It is there. It will be fulfilled. Cyrus and Darius, Mr. O, Mr. T, it will all come to pass. So Zerubbabel will lay the foundation during Cyrus' time, mid-seals or in the second half of seals. They will not be con able to finish because there is a lot of strife and a lot of fighting and a lot of wars and a lot of deaths and a lot of haters. It's there, and the doctrines of Lucifer, Lucifer will rule the world. All this will be there, so they will not finish it in the pattern that they have not finished it in the old times also. They had to wait until the time of Darius. And Darius will come, Mr. T will come for his second time, and then Joshua will be the high priest for the temple. And the Robber will be the governor or even king of Jerusalem at this time and also the priest under the high priest. David will serve the Lord. It is so perfectly. Joshua has taken the people over into the promised land. 
It is all there. Moses has died off. The end of the Exodus is the end of the multitude close the white going into the rapture. The church is going into paradise. Then a new time comes Joshua, Yeshua, the high priest, two people. The donkey and the colt. The donkey on which the Lord sits, the high priest Melchizedek, for the first half of trumpets, and the colt is Zerubbabel, the, the kind of King David that is coming there. And that's the reason why you see in Ezekiel 45, 46, that the prince, the prince is not Jesus, the prince is David. So two people are coming and two witnesses are mentioned in the book of Revelation. This is a wonderful connection what the Lord has revealed. Brothers and sisters, go and study this scripture and get an understanding that we know 100% clear now who is building the temple, the Millennium Temple. We know who is serving as a priest in the temple through Ezekiel 45, 46. We know when that is. This is the timing. We know that this is the timing when Satan is on us after the cutting off. Is the high priest still there? Yes, because he's fighting with the one who comes out of the abyss until the end of the six, seal, uh, six trumpets. And then he will kill. And then for three days he will be and three nights in the earth to set captives free. And then he will go to the back to the uh, to the heavens and prepare himself to come now when the seventh year when the, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord will then come for Armageddon and then the millennium kingdom will start. It is all there, brothers and sisters. We do not have the Lord, another person, plus the two witnesses, plus the 144,000. No, we have only the two witnesses and the 144,000. And the two witnesses are Joshua and Zerubbabel in the pattern to Melchizedek and in the pattern to David. It is all in the scripture. And we know that there is a cutting off in mid of trumpets. That is the end of their, their testimony in Jerusalem. And then the fight and war will start. However, that will play out. And then at the end of sixth seal, there will be now the sacrifice. There will now be the death. And then there will be the resurrection and the ascension again. Pattern always to Jesus Christ. It is there. That's the reason why you always ask yourself, why is it that the two witnesses are dying, having a similar time in the earth with, with the Lord, and then also ascending to the heaven as the Lord? Why? Because it is the Lord, together with David, who will do that. And then they will return. Either way, it will not be long. They will return in the seventh trumpet and the third woe. They will return for Armageddon. Both of them. They will clean the temple and David will serve again there until the millennium will start. And I believe once the millennium will start, the, the animal sacrifices will stop. Because then, as we see from Ezekiel 48, we see now that the, every tribe will get the inheritance because they have accepted the Messiah and everything will be understood now. And I believe that. There is no proof that I can bring forth scriptural that this is the case, but I believe that the animal sacrifices will stop them because the house of Judah, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ at the end of the, of the sixth trumpet, will be safe and will embrace them. Remember the story in the scripture about the earthquake, 7,000 people will die and the people will give glory to God? That's the moment when the eyes will open. Because they were blinded in part now, the house of Judah. The eyes will open and they will see, oh, this was our Messiah. This is the second time that he would die for us. First for the house of Israel, second for the house of Judah. And we love him. And now we repenting of him. There is also scripture where it says, they will all fall to their knees. And they will see, we have pierced him. And we are so sorry that we have pierced him. And this is a moment in time when they will embrace him. And I believe with this starting, with this jubilee year, what is Ezekiel 48, the jubilee year, when they receive all the inheritance, they will also then abolish the animal sacrifices and will accept Jesus Christ forevermore. But that is my own personal opinion. Brothers and sisters, I hope that this helped you to get an understanding who the two witnesses will be. 
Because remember what I told you yesterday. I was always concerned about the Mount of Transfiguration when we saw the Lord and Moses and Elijah that at this moment in time, Peter was still there. And Peter is the reference for the church. So this says that the, the Lord and Moses and Elijah will be for the seal tribulation, not for the trumpet. For the trumpet, it will be for the house of Judah, and it will be different as Melchizedek, Melchizedek and Joshua, and David and Zerubbabel. It is all there. It's in the scripture. It will all be fulfilled. And you will see it with your own eyes if you are part of the 144,000, or when you look down from New Jerusalem from paradise onto the earth at that time. Brothers and sisters, be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take it to the Lord. Seek confirmation about it. But I believe that the Lord has revealed everything to us. So we are standing ready to meet the Son of Man for his 40 days on earth. And it's all there. Let him come to fulfill the sign of Jonah in Luke. The 40 days of repentance. Nineveh. Now it will be 40 days of repentance to the world and to Jerusalem. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. They will not repent and everything will then begin. Brothers and sisters, stand ready. Praise for impact. A flash of light is coming to you and it will transform you into that perfect vessel that the Lord has formed you over a long time. It will give you access to linear and circular time. It will give you access to walk under an open heaven with the Father together. This is a moment in time. Be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Amen.